Now, as we mentioned earlier, things are changing up here at Stormont. There will be questions on Monday and Tuesday starting next week. From June 22nd, the first question to a minister can't be from a party colleague. In all, there are 10 recommended changes. Ulster Unionist Ken Robinson welcomed them. What we have attempted to do here is to move forward the procedures in a way that not only is helpful to members, but also those who are watching us on television can see what it is we're trying to achieve here. We're trying to bring this Assembly Chamber to life. We're trying to give the public the opportunity to see that a tremendous amount of work is going on in the committees prior to us arriving in the Chamber here for question time. So I, I welcome the uh, ten recommendations that have been brought forward, uh, particularly again could I say that uh, the First Minister and Deputy First Minister should appear here because they are representatives of this House and of this Assembly and we want to see them here in that role and I think the public deserve to see them in that role. The other um, point, Mr. Chair, or Mr Speaker, is that the use of questions, the recommendation regarding the use of questions, particularly priority questions, there has been a feeling in the committee, and I think wider across the chamber, that sometimes the priority questions are to a degree being abused in that they are not priority in many cases, and they're tending to clutter up the situation. So I think the fact that we're recommending one priority question, a member still kind of a total of five questions going in the day, I think that hopefully reflects that as well. Um, the staggering of uh, Ministers speaking two on a Monday and one on a Tuesday, I think is also helpful. I would hate to think we were responding to the media looking for an extra slot on a Tuesday. I would like to think that the media will take this opportunity also to realise what the committee has been trying to do and will give the Tuesday slot a lot of priority so that more positive messages can come out to the general public and they can see what is going on in the chamber. Overall, uh, Mr Speaker, I think we want to bring the chamber to life. Well, the changes are all part of an attempt to increase openness and public awareness. Good ideas, you'd think, in these days of scandal and expense claims. But Declan O'Lone of the STLP wants more radical surgery. I'm is fundamentally about holding uh, ministers and the Assembly Commission to account. And uh, I think there's a very wide perception that it is not effectively doing that. And that ties in very much with the uh, lack of spontaneity and uh, lack of interest uh, in, in our question time, as, as witness the frequent uh, low attendance by members at question time and the uh, perceptions of the, of the public uh, in relation to it. And if it were effectively holding uh, ministers and Assembly Commission to account, then the interest would be there. Uh, so there is a, a significant uh, problem. Uh, we would see these uh, standing order changes as a, a useful move in the right direction. Uh, and therefore we give them our support, uh, but we, we certainly uh, uh, do, don't feel that this is the, is the full picture or the full answer uh, to making question time really effective, uh, and we, we uh, do have some concerns, and, and we only see how this works out in practice. Uh, the, uh, the, the process where uh, members' names are selected in advance uh, and only then do they submit questions which are then subject to a further ballot. Uh, that may work, uh, but the, the random process uh, could produce uh, freakish results uh, which might be deleterious to the interests of certain parties at certain times. Uh, so we are vigilant about that, uh, and we will only see how that works out in practice. Uh, but for the, for, uh, for, for the moment, uh, we, we're, we're certainly uh, interested in, in it going ahead and seeing how it uh, operates in practice. Uh, as I say, uh, we certainly don't think, uh, uh, even if it works as best it can, that this is going to be uh, the full answer. Uh, we see at Westminster and other places uh, a considerably greater variety of, of uh, mechanisms of questions where there is a real opportunity for members uh, to hold their ministers to account. Declan Nolo there of the SCLP, but Lord Morrow of the DUP wasn't impressed. Here he is, having a little dig at that particular SCLP MLA. Uh, Declan O'Lo was a different kettle of fish altogether uh, because he has sees a lot of boogeymen in here and he sees everyone that's not in the SDLP as suspicious, devious, downright dangerous, and all that sort of stuff. He set up, he, he set up 
the, he had particular, uh, he thinks that OFM, DFM, I think, are out to get him. Uh, now, it may, well be that the, it may well be that they are, and uh, maybe with some justification too.